leading the way with important local coverage. You're watching WISN 12 News at 6. The snow has arrived and it's about to get very heavy. How much you'll have to shovel when it's all done. There's growing frustration about the early vaccine distribution in Wisconsin, skipping many workers who need it most, like paramedics, EMTs, and firefighters. 12 News investigates. Plus, the passing of a respected priest known for his Latin translations for popes. Milwaukee's Archbishop reflects on his work for the Vatican and its influence for students right here. And it's closing day for a family-owned fishing shop, but not without the owners offering a gift to a special group in our community after more than 70 years in business. First at 6 tonight, the snow is finally here. You heard Mark say it. There it is. You're looking live at Gerke's Corners right now where you can see the traffic is light and it's not affecting traffic right now, but this is just starting. We are right now at the 6 o'clock hour, and as Mark mentioned, it is going to be getting worse in the next few hours. We also have a crew here in Menominee Falls where you can see traffic a little bit more heavy and some of the snow coming down here in this part of town, but we will keep an eye on this as the snow continues to fall and accumulate there on the roadways and in our neighborhoods. 12 News is leading the way with live storm coverage tonight. We start with the chief, Mark Baden. And Mark, we are in for several hours of heavy snow just starting right now. Yeah, really between now and midnight. Get ready for the worst conditions that we're going to see. Now, this makes places like the Rock Sports Complex very exciting. You can see the snow there in front of the lights. The snowboarders are enjoying this. 29 degrees. That's one good thing. Temperatures are right around freezing, and of course, there's been a lot of brining on the road, so hopefully the roads won't be too bad, but this snow is going to be so heavy, it will have the ability to overcome that. Roads will get snow covered everywhere in southeastern Wisconsin, including on the interstates as we head throughout the evening hours. You can see it all filling in here. It took a long time because the dryer that we had in place, but now snow coming down almost everywhere except into Fond du Lac and Sheboygan. It will reach you as well in the next hour or so. Then let's focus in on what's happening just to the southwest of us. There is a pocket of super heavy snow in here and even thunder snow that is trying to make its way into southern Wisconsin. If it's successful, we're going to be dealing with some heavy snowfall rates of an inch to two inches per hour. So again, watching this very, very closely. We're going to time this all out, let you know who gets the most coming up in Weather Watch 12. All right, Mark, thank you. And the snow is hitting during the drive home. We showed you those live pictures of the roadways. There is one of our traffic cameras on the right side of your screen and the left side. You see our traffic maps. We're at this point at 601 tonight. It's all green on the screen, but we know if people are still out as this snow continues to fall and accumulate, that will get worse throughout the night. Milwaukee DPW crews say they have 103 salt trucks and plows all ready to go. We well, do we have monitors, we have patrols, and, uh, and we have uh, multiple weather partners that we source with to determine really where the storm is trending. Obviously, it is a prediction, uh, along with, you know, Weather Watch 12 will tell you. It's something that uh, isn't an exact science, but they do pretty, pretty well when it comes to the data. Even the city officials know who to watch. 12 News Caroline Reinwald also tracking the road conditions. She's live tonight in McQuanago. Caroline. Uh, it's beautiful to see, but uh, the drivers certainly are taking their time now here in McGuanago. We're in downtown McGuanago on 83. Take a look at this plow that's going by us now, picking up just the beginnings of what we're seeing here on the road. Uh, this has really started to accumulate here in the last half hour, uh, as you can see here in downtown. Just see what I'm picking up on my hands here. This is uh, easy to move around right now, but it's accumulating very quickly. It just started about half an hour, 40, 40 minutes ago. So uh, we've seen quite a bit of accumulation since it began, and we're going to continue to see that throughout the evening as Mark Baden is forecasting for you now, Derek. Yeah, Carolina, we can see that snow coming down even more fiercely just in the last 45 minutes. As you mentioned, we know you'll keep an eye on it for us out there in the field. And a reminder, winter parking rules are in effect in Milwaukee. Make sure you read the street signs before you park. And don't forget, parking is not allowed on throughways and bus routes from 2 to 6 in the morning. As of right now, Milwaukee has not declared a snow emergency, but other cities like Kenosha and Pleasant Prairie have. And because of the timing of this storm into the overnight hours, we'll be on the air early tomorrow morning to track the snow. Live reports, snow conditions, and totals all start at 4 a.m. 
on 12 News this morning. And make sure you have the 12 News mobile app downloaded on your smart device. There is interactive radars and storm alerts you can customize to your exact location. It is free for you to download on Google Play or in the App Store. To other news tonight, 12 News investigates EMS workers telling 12 News they've been largely left out of the COVID-19 vaccinations two weeks after the vaccine arrived in Wisconsin. The latest group to reach out to 12 News, the Milwaukee County Fire Chiefs Association. Its leader spoke to 12 News Nick Bohr while he waits. Elation as vaccinations began in Wisconsin two weeks ago. But so far, nearly all of the immunizations have gone to hospital workers, leaving out medical crews, EMS, who work in the field. By no means are we expecting to be the first ones in line. We just would like, I guess, a piece of that pie. The head of the Milwaukee County Fire Chiefs Association, Greenfield's John Cohn, says chiefs countywide have tried to understand the challenges of distribution and supply chains, especially with the Pfizer vaccine's ultra cold requirements. But still, our number currently of fire and EMS members vaccinated is zero. Um, so that number stands out a bit um, when other providers are getting vaccinated and maybe in the hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands and we're still stuck at zero. A frustration when their job requires them to be in close proximity to their patients in uncontrolled environments, to ride inside an enclosed ambulance, even to be near their co-workers for hours at a time. I know our local health departments, our local health officers, uh, they've been working uh, tirelessly to obtain vaccination, to immunize these frontline providers. Milwaukee County's yes, Director of Medical office. Services calls the lack of EMS immunizations, quote, a major issue. These EMS providers in Milwaukee County uh, and in the state and the country for that matter, they're in the 1A uh, phase of vaccination. That's for good reason. Uh, and we're hurt, working hard to make sure they get the vaccine uh, as soon as possible. So there are some some kinks in the, the system um, and we just wanna make sure that we aren't, we aren't continued to be forgotten about. The state tells 12 News they're working with local health departments to establish a vaccination pipeline and hope to have that set up soon, perhaps within the next week. At the Greenfield Fire Department, Nick Bohr, WISN 12 News. And of course, we'll stay on top of this story as more vaccines are distributed statewide. Wisconsin is now updating its vaccination numbers. As of today, more than 47,000 people received their first dose. Most of those doses are the Pfizer vaccine, which the FDA approved about a week before Modernus. Wisconsin health officials, meanwhile, reported 72 additional COVID-19 related deaths today and another 2,384 people tested positive. Aurora Healthcare says it will review its handling of the COVID vaccine after hundreds of doses were ruined and had to be thrown out. It happened at the Aurora Medical Center in Grafton. That's where Kent Wainscott explains the new steps to prevent this costly mistake from happening again. It happened here over Christmas night and into the next morning. Someone left out 50 vials, nearly 500 doses of the COVID vaccine out unrefrigerated. The vaccine was spoiled. The vials had to be discarded. The hospital says that it was an isolated incident, an accident, but they are taking steps to ensure that it doesn't happen again and they may not be alone. In a statement to 12 News, an Aurora spokesman said this was the result of unintended human error, and we have used it as an opportunity to review and remind team members about our process. Should all hospitals be reviewing their own procedures for handling the vaccine after seeing how a mistake like this can happen? There's absolutely all hospitals should be reviewing uh, their policies and practices uh, in health departments and, and anybody else receiving vaccine. State health officials say that hospitals are required to ensure that their staff has proper training before they're allowed to receive the vaccine. Aurora didn't say whether additional training is going to be a part of its review of this incident. In Grafton, I'm Kent Wainscott, WISN 12 News. And remember, we are answering some of your vaccine questions on WISN.com. Just click Frequently Asked Questions and Answers right there on the home page. Milwaukee's first mobile COVID test site opened today at Custer Stadium near 44th and Hampton. It will be open for at least two weeks and could move depending on where hot spots emerge. When they give us the, uh, the bags uh, with the swabs and stuff, she kind of walks us through it. Uh, it's just pretty much uh, sw uh, uh, each nostril um, and it's pretty easy. It doesn't hurt. 
The free tests are available from 8 until noon on weekdays and 10 to 3 on weekends. A Southside mobile testing location has yet to be announced. A priest known for being a renowned Latinist and translator for four popes died after testing positive for COVID-19. Those who knew him told our Adrian Pedersen he was talented as well as down to earth. I have a picture pulled up here of Father Reginald Foster. Here he is. He passed away at his nursing home in Milwaukee on Friday, really the early hours of Christmas morning. According to the Archbishop of Milwaukee, Jerome Lestecki, the 81 year old Milwaukee native spent most of his priestly life in Rome, working for the Vatican and teaching students Latin. In fact, the Archbishop had the priest as a teacher and wrote this in a blog. I have often said that if you were an artist during the Renaissance, you would attempt to study with the greatest of the greats. A Michelangelo or Da Vinci Foster was the greatest of the greats when it came to the Latin language. During the pandemic, Father Foster continued teaching his students through video conferencing. In the newsroom, I'm Adrian Patterson, WISN 12 News. Father Reginald Foster was a member of the Washington province of Discalced Carmelite Friars and studied at Holy Hill before going to Rome. According to the medical examiner, he died also from other health problems outside of coronavirus. And we will be looking back on some of the lives lost to COVID in 2020 during our 12 News special. 2020, the year of coronavirus, airs tomorrow night right here at 7 o'clock. And breaking tonight, President Trump is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to get involved in Wisconsin's election results. The campaign said tonight it's asking the high court to review the state Supreme Court ruling, rejecting the president's attempt to throw out tens of thousands of absentee ballots. The campaign is asking the court to rule before January 6th. That is the date Congress certifies the Electoral College votes. Also breaking tonight, U.S. Uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says those $600 stimulus checks could be directly deposited into U.S. bank accounts as soon as tonight. According to Mnuchin's tweet here on your screen, the Treasury Department has delivered a payment file to the Federal Reserve. The tweet goes on to say payments will continue into next week. Now we are on weather watch tonight as the first real snowstorm of the season moves in and that snow is going to be heavy and wet where it will likely mix with sleet next in weather watch 12. Also ahead tonight at six closing after more than seven decades in business. The special plans the owners of this fish shop have for all of their unsold merchandise. Then tonight on 12 News at 10, a bipartisan call for transparency about the state's vaccination plans. The questions two Wisconsin members of Congress want Governor Tony Evers to answer. And the deadly earthquake that rocked Croatia, the search for survivors buried in the rubble. It's all tonight at 10 after To Tell the Truth and the Year 2020, right here on WISN 12. And another live Weather Watch 12 snow coverage continuing here at 6 o'clock. You can see the picture has changed just a little bit by the amount of snow that is falling. This picture is coming to you from Menominee Falls. As you can see, traffic there uh, picking up a little bit here at 614 here on this Tuesday night. We are going to keep our eye on this storm as it continues to come through our area and the accumulations that come as a result. Meanwhile, 12 News Caroline Reinwald is live again with us tonight in Maquanago as the conditions in Caroline we see the snow still coming down pretty fiercely. Yeah, hard and fast. That's how the snow's falling right now. You can look down at the ground here, probably about eh, less than a quarter of an inch that's fallen so far. And these cars behind me, you can tell they're moving a little bit slower than they were half an hour ago, uh, making their way on the roads. DPW here in Waukesha County has about 50 to 53 trucks out, uh, making sure that the roads are plowed. They are pre-treated, so they're ready to go, as is uh, Milwaukee, as you, as you heard earlier. So we're going to stay with it throughout the night and let you know what we're seeing. All right, Caroline, thank you very much. And the road's going to get very messy this evening, Mark. We saw about a half hour ago the pavement there where Caroline was. Can't see that now. One good thing, though, the temps are near freezing. Yeah, it was kind of interesting because we had Caroline at the top of our 5 o'clock show. There was no snow at all. Then we had a little bit of light snow later on in that show. And now, of course, there's already accumulating snow on the ground. It's accumulating on the roads. The good thing is temperatures around freezing. That helps because the salt works very well. The problem is this snow this evening is going to come down so fast and furious you're not going to be able to keep up. So what I want you to do, if you don't have to drive this evening, just stay off the roads. Just wait until this is done, especially until after midnight. 
and then the you know, snow will start to taper off a bit. Temperatures hang around freezing as we head throughout the nighttime hours. The heaviest snow is right now to midnight. It's going to get a little bit heavier in a couple of hours as a, a pocket of heavier snow moving out of Iowa comes in here. It will get lighter as the rest of the nighttime hours goes on between 6 a.m. and noon, maybe a little drizzle or some flurry. So moderate to heavy snow. Yeah, high impact there. Some ice possible, but temperatures right around freezing should be bad, but don't be surprised to get some sleet mixing in. Maybe even a little bit of freezing dri rain or drizzle. Uh, wind is going to pick up poor visibility for sure with that heavier snow. Winter storm warnings in our western counties of Dodge, as well as Jefferson and Walworth County. Everybody else under a winter weather advisory until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. How much you're going to get? Well, where it stays all snow and depending on where that heavy snow band ends up, we're going to show you why we might have to rotate this down a little bit more. And if we can get the sleep mixing in here, there'll be lesser amounts in Milwaukee, Racine and Kenosha. If it stays all snow, we'll get four to seven inches in Milwaukee and Racine and Kenosha. So watching for that sleep mixing in that would happen later on this evening, late this evening, probably after 10 o'clock. If you're in Waukesha, Port Washington, West Bend, Beaverdam, Johnson Creek, and Sheboygan, I think for the most part, you're looking at about four to seven inches of snow. The burst of heavy snow happens this evening. Again, those totals generally two to four Milwaukee South, four to seven inches elsewhere where it does stay all snow. Uh, snow covered roads, we already have a lot of those. Some icy spots are certainly possible. And again, waiting to see if we'll see the sleet mixing in. So when is it going to be the heaviest? Well, again, now to midnight, that's when the shoveling will be going on in full force. And this is likely to have a fair amount of moisture with it, so it will be tough to shovel as the evening goes on. You can see the snow accumulating here in downtown Milwaukee. Temperature coming in at 29 degrees, where it's actually gone down a little bit because of the heavy snow moving in. Snow covered at Drexel Town Square. Kind of nice to see we finally have some snow to look at those holiday decorations. Uh, not fun to drive on though. Slow it down there on the roads. Lots of distance between you and the car in front of you. You can see the snow uh, on the uh, pavement there as well. Everybody below freezing a little bit warmer right next to the lake shore. That radar completely filling in now. Notice some of the darker blue shades. That's the heavier snow and we do have pockets of thunder snow where we're getting super heavy snowfall rates of about two inches per hour. If this makes its way into southern Wisconsin, this would be bring, bringing the bigger totals. We'll have to see. Might have to rotate those four to seven inches down a little bit. Uh, stay tuned throughout the night here at Weather Watch 12. 36 tomorrow. Early mix. It's still going to be slippery in the morning, so take it easy out there. 28 degrees, kind of a chilly day on Thursday. And then another system rolling in here on Friday. That could bring us a whole hodgepodge of weather with snow, freezing rain, and sleet, and then just plain rain. And then a little of the light snow as we head into the start of the new year. And then actually that's Friday's the start of the new year. I got to change 2021. Uh, Saturday will be a chance of light snow. 32 <laughs> on Sunday, 33 degrees on Monday, 35 on Tuesday. This is what happens when I get so excited to talk about snow. So I are forget you, to move these things. Are you trying to make 2020 one day longer? We really don't need to have any more of this year. <laughs> All right, Mark, thank you very much. Well, it is the last day in business for a family owned fishing tackle shop in business since 1949. Ranky Brothers at uh, 32nd and Greenfield closed at 4 o'clock this afternoon. The owners say the pandemic forced them to close for several months right during their busy part of the season. That made it too tough to stay open. And after 53 years, Bob Ranky says he will certainly miss the many customers. They're going out of their way to come in and say, Bob, we're going to miss you. And I'm going to miss them. So, yeah, it's it's a fish on fish on. <laughs> Bob and Peggy Ranke say what they did not sell today will be donated to the VA, which has fly tying classes for our local veterans. And Dan is here with Big 12 Sports and a bit of a wake up call for the Badgers. Yeah, move up to sixth in the polls and then lose at home for the first time. What concerned Greg Gard the most? Plus two games and two nights in Miami for the Bucks, And the Packers showed they are more than just an offensive juggernaut. What they were able to, why they were able to shut down the NFL's leading rusher on Sunday. It's all next in Big 12 Sports. Hi, I'm Eden Shackle. Tomorrow on 12 News This Morning, we're waking up to snow. Meteorologist Lindsay Slater breaks down the storm and when we'll start to clear out. Plus, we're monitoring the roads ahead of a messy AM commute. We'll see you bright and early starting at 4 AM tomorrow. Big 12 Sports, presented by Menards. We are only three games into the Buck season, but the next two nights could set the tone. 
The Bucs play at Miami tonight and tomorrow, facing the team that knocked them out of the playoffs last season. And Milwaukee has to shake off a bad loss in New York on Sunday. Just after that loss to the Knicks, we, we all didn't, didn't sleep well that night. And, uh, you know, it's just the mentality of a winning team. I've been on teams when you lose like that and just you move on. It's, it's nothing to it. But just here, you know, we didn't settle for that. Um, we're ready to get back out there tonight and, and make a statement and uh, get a good win. Bucks forward Tory Craig won't play tonight. And when he returns, he'll probably have to wear a protective mask on his face. Craig was elbowed right in the nose during Sunday's loss and suffered a nasal fracture. Heat star Jimmy Butler also out tonight. College Hoops Marquette's off until January 2nd when they play at Georgetown. The Badgers host 21st-ranked Minnesota Thursday afternoon. Sixth-ranked Wisconsin will drop in the polls after losing at home last night to Maryland. The Badgers gave up an uncharacteristic 46 second-half points, and Maryland made 11 of their last 12 shots. You know, we'll, we'll look at the film. Did we get spread out too much? Did we get, too, get out of our gaps too much? But, you know, you give up a three here and there, and then you start getting nervous, and you creep out a little bit more, and you create some gaps. And then if you have a you know, broken coverage where you don't get the ball stopped on a, on a ball screen or on dribble penetration, um, you know, they were able to take advantage of every mistake we made. After a week out of the top spot, the Packers once again the highest scoring team in the NFL. They've scored at least 30 points 11 times this season, which ties the franchise record set in 2011. They've scored 118 more points than Sunday's opponent, the Bears. Now, Green Bay's defense held Derrick Henry, the league's leading rusher, to under 100 yards Sunday. That allowed the Packers' pass rushers to focus on quarterback Ryan Tannehill, sacking him twice and forcing a pair of interceptions. It was the most complete game of the season for the Packers defense. I definitely think we did a good job, you know, containing him because, uh, you know, as, as you can you can tell, you know, he's a good runner. We was trying to make them one dimensional and um, but we already knew that he was going to come in and try to run the ball and um, try to have a big game against us. So uh, all week we just uh, reiterated just to fly around and uh, swarm as a defense. And tonight at 10, we'll hear from Aaron Rodgers why he loves playing in the snow, and it has nothing to do with throwing snowballs. Damn, we got a lot of snow coming to us right now, Mark. I like the snow as well. <laughs> it's kind of nice to see. And it's festive. Be careful, though, if you don't have to drive, don't. It is accumulating on roads across the area because it's coming down at a pretty heavy clip, and that snow will only get heavier over the next couple of hours. Look at those deep blue shades. That will be heavy snow. Stay with Weather Watch 12. We'll continue to have updates. We'll see you back here, 12 News at 9 and 10.